Well, hello and welcome to Fed Day in the D.C. today. I have uh, just returned to my hotel room to record this briefly and then I'm heading off to a dinner event. And we'll be back in the Newport office tomorrow to bring you another D.C. today on Thursday. It's uncanny the deja vu of today. Um, the market was down most of the morning, but not a ton, but it was it was down over 100 points. Then the Fed announcement came that they were hiking rates, 75 basis points, just like the last meeting, just like the, th- you know, three before today, and that just like had been priced in 100% more or less into futures markets. And then immediately markets bounced up uh, uh, almost 500 points. They were up over 300. They had been down over 100. And, and then um, over the next hour and a half, you had a bunch of up and down volatility. At one point, the market had gone up over 300, then down um, a few hundred, then back up again, and then it closed down 505 points. And so you just had this massive volatility, and I've explained over and over what causes it, and it's just about as dumb as anything I, I even know how to comment on. Uh, but it did lead to um, selling into the final hour um, with accelerated uh, selling in the final 20 minutes. The S&P was down 2.5%. The Dow was down 1.5%. The NASDAQ was down almost 3.5%. So obviously the quote-unquote long duration stocks were hit most and the short duration stocks hit much less. But even then, utilities was the best performing sector on the day and it was still down 1%. Uh, but consumer discretionary was down again another 3.79. So uh, people who want to argue, well, this, the market, went down because of Fed tightening would would probably have to explain why the, the initial response to Fed tightening was about a 500 point rally from the downside to the low side. There was just an awful lot of high frequency, very high volatility action. And I wouldn't make heads or tails of it fundamentally. One thing I would point out is that in this November meeting, they do not update their dot plot, which is the Fed governors all indicating where they see the Fed funds rate being at different future points in time. I think they generally go out a couple of years. And I've commented a lot that they're always pretty much wrong about their own projections, but at least it gives you an idea in the present tense of what they're anticipating. But they didn't update the dot plot today, so we won't get that till the December meeting. Um, so th- look, they raised rates um, by 75 basis points. You now have a Fed funds rate that is 3.75%. And the announcement that accompanied that, the first couple of paragraphs, um, was verbatim, cut and paste from the last meeting. The ongoing, the subsequent paragraphs had some minor tweaks, basically saying something to the effect of that they will be slowing down the pace of rate hikes. And you really didn't get uh, much more info until you got into the the press conference with Chairman Powell. Um, the few, I immediately went into the Fed Funds futures market as I was watching all this real time. And the, at one point, it, the, the odds of a 75 basis point rate hike in December went from 60% down to about 35%. They closed at 30, excuse me, 43%, so less than half. And the odds of a 50 basis points, a half a point rate hike at the next meeting we're, we're up in the about 70%. And there was a 5% chance of no rate hike at all. That went away. And now we close the day at 67, excuse me, 57% chance of 50 basis points and 43 of 75. That'll move around over the next month. But that's kind of, I think, the consensus expectation now is that the 75 will go to 50. And then my view is that they'll wait and see where they are from there. Um, the only thing that Chairman Powell said to help set forward expectations, and again, there's no dot plots, and, and the press release itself, the announcement from FOMC, the Federal Open Market Committee, and Chairman Powell's comments themselves were um, equal to, if not even more so than normal, um, boring in their lack of kind of specificity and, and color and really relying on very high-level platitudes. But there was a comment about um, the fear of them overdoing it and tightening and him saying that they, if that happens, he's not particularly worried about it because he knows they have the policy tools to ease and pull it back the other way. 
And so this kind of is in line with what I've been talking about for a while, that they're, they want to go until they break something. And when they break something, they want to spring back the other way. And Powell all but sort of said that today. I mean, it, the language was a bit more couched. Um, what I call that and what we in the investment world call it is a boom bust cycle, the exacerbation of a boom bust cycle. Um, Powell, Chairman Powell didn't necessarily use those words, but he kind of freelanced his way into talking just about that. By the way, bank reserves are down $1.2 trillion since last December. And so there's a lot of money that has left bank deposits. It's reduced the excess reserve level on deposit with financial institutions, banking institutions, and then uh, replaced it with that cash money funds, money market funds primarily being increased by more or less the same level. And, and so a lot of that quantitative tightening has been done for them. And, and it reinforces my theory that quantitative tightening will be done before it even really gets uh, started. The quote from Powell uh, that was different here than last meeting is a stance of monetary policy that is sufficiently restrictive to return inflation to 2% over time. And so that there's not a whole lot of specificity. They want to tighten. They're looking for any kind of data excuse to do so, to, to not tighten, to reverse the tightening rather. And then there was um, no talk at all about M2, the money supply level, which is now, which was way high, uh, up post COVID, has come way back down and is fact now uh, for a month or two been at a slightly negative number. And uh, no reporters ask him about M2. No one else seems to bring it up. I don't believe it's been addressed even in the last couple of FOMC me meeting minutes. We won't get the last two days meeting minutes for another few weeks, but how they're talking about reducing inflation with monetary policy and yet somehow money supply doesn't play into it, only the interest rate, I just think speaks to the brokenness of the model they're using. Uh, so, you know, if what you want out of your life right now is to see the Fed uh, stop raising rates and to start cutting rates, then you want to be rooting for a lot of people to lose their job, even though I don't believe that that is the case. I don't believe that in fact, um, high unemployment is a great thing for inflation and and low unemployment is a horrible thing for inflation, but that is what they are forecasting their models are built around. Take that as, as you wish. Um, okay, so more or less, let's see, I think I covered the major points. Consumer discussion got killed. Oil was up over 1% today. It's sitting there just shy of $90 again. Uh, they announced a seven-day lockdown in the Chinese city where Foxconn is. Essentially, they call it iPhone City. It's the world's largest iPhone factory. So there's continues to be reports that Xi Jinping is looking to loosen COVID restrictions. And then there's other reports that they're doing another lockdown in a somewhat economically sensitive city to global supply chain. Last I checked, people, people love their phones. Um, the ADP private sector number came in 239,000 uh, jobs in the private sector for October. There was about 192 expected. You've heard my spiel before. This is not necessarily prescient around or predictive around um, the BLS number that will come Friday. Uh, the jobs number from the Bureau of Labor Statistics uh, sometimes is correlated to ADP and sometimes is not. So we'll see what happens there. Uh, that's kind of the day in review. And we'll see what happens for Thursday. Just to give you, you know, look, every single day is a new day. Um, the last couple times we've had big market uh, volatility when the Fed announcement, then a big up day, then a big down day. We could have two down days. We could have an up day, then a down day. It, it's just volatile. I'm not predicting that tomorrow's up a lot or down a lot. Either is possible, but that there hasn't been a day in a while where the Fed day was not, was followed by a boring day. More volatility is likely. Um, the only difference, I suppose, is that there was definitely more traders caught off sides on the last meetings, and there just simply has to be less people trying to um, game the gamers in this case. That's my take here in the DC today. Look forward to being back in Newport, early flight out tomorrow morning, headed out to my evening dinner event here in beautiful Grand Rapids, Michigan. Uh, Fed day is the best day. And uh, if you have any questions, you can send them to questions at thebonsongroup.com and we will answer. And, and there is a question today that I loved in the dctoday.com. If you 
uh, are looking at the written version. Okay, thanks again. Thank you.